Hi there, welcome to the 40th episode of the Synth Project, where we are building a synth together. Today we will start working on a long overdue module for our synth, the MIDI interface, which will allow us to connect input devices external to the synth and use them to control our synth parameters in various ways. Without any further ado, let's begin. First of all, we need to make a choice whether to use the MIDI DIN interface or the MIDI USB interface. Given the possibilities provided by the MIDI USB interface and also the easiness to connect together several devices, I'm opting for using just that. However, this choice will not preclude the possibility of adding yet another MIDI module in the future using the more traditional MIDI DIN interface. Here is the block diagram representing the MIDI module I envisioned for the synth. The intelligence of the module will be built around an Arduino 2, which provides several input and outputs with even a couple of digital to analog converters, and has also ample memory and speeds to satisfy every current and future need for the module. And I said future for a reason. In fact, I plan to start with a basic interface that will allow us to connect a MIDI keyboard, for example, or a MIDI drum interface like the Akai LPD-8. The panel will also contain a number of elements that will currently remain unused, but they will be utilized in the future just with simple software updates. The possibilities are endless. The Arduino 2 will have a shield attached to it that will provide the capabilities of USB host interface. And that is because the native USB port on the Arduino, mounted alongside its USB programming port, is only capable of working as a device USB, not as a host USB. In order to be able to connect external devices, we need therefore to add a USB host interface, and for that I have chosen to use the USB host shield 2.0. On the front panel, therefore, we will have three USB connectors in total, one being the programming port, the second one being the native USB port, which is one of the elements that we will use in the future evolutions of the module, and the last one being the USB host port, to connect external MIDI devices. To provide flexibility for present and future capabilities, we will also have a two-row LCD and a bunch of push buttons to make selections based on what is visualized on the display. We will also have a number of jack sockets to provide signals that will control the synth functionalities and a multi-turn potentiometer that will give us the option of fine-tuning the control voltage outputs coming out of some of the jacks. In today's episode, we will concentrate on the Arduino 2 basic programming, the USB host shield and the LCD. With that, we should be able to attach an external MIDI device and visualize on the LCD the information coming from it. In later episodes, we will start adding to the module all the pieces needed to make it a reasonable first version of a MIDI interface. I have already tested the capability of an Arduino 2 with USB host shield to read the MIDI messages, coming either from my Yamaha DGX505 or my Akai LPD8. That, however, was a rudimentary design only capable of showing the received the MIDI messages from the MIDI device to the serial monitor of a computer connected to the Arduino 2. It was an interesting experience because it taught me a lot about the capabilities of various Arduino boards and the necessity of using a USB host shield. If you haven't watched that video, I suggest you to go watch it before continuing with this one. The link is coming up now on the right upper corner of the screen and is also available in this video summary. I started working on this video on the basis of that one, adding a few new stuff based on the ideas I have for the MIDI module, and more stuff will be added in the next few episodes until the full MIDI module is complete and operational. In today's video I have worked on adding to the Arduino 2, from the previous video, a classic 1602A LCD screen, and on displaying on such screen the MIDI data coming from an attached MIDI device. This way I can start making experiments directly on the synth without having to bring with me the whole computer. 
once, of course, a new program is installed on the Arduino. This one is the program I used in the original video on the MIDI messages decoder. The program, however, is now enriched with additional code to handle the 1602A liquid crystal display. Let's take a look at it. The first difference to note is the new constant debug, currently set to the value of 1. Depending on the value of such variable, I added the subcode to include or exclude the execution of the serial monitor prints across the whole program. Here, for example, all the serial prints to display the information in the not-off message on the serial monitor have been put inside an if statement. If the debug variable is set to 1, we will send the information to the serial monitor, otherwise we won't. All the other places in the code where there are serial prints have been treated the same way. This is for the not on message, and this is for the control change message. Even the serial prints in the setup function have been treated the same way. Once I am sure that the code works, I will change one single line at the beginning of the file, the one that defines the value of the variable debug, and I will disable the serial prints everywhere in the code. It's that simple. Let's go now to the other change in the code, and that is the addition of the library Liquid Crystal used to handle the 1602A display. The library, among other things, requires a list of all the data pins used to control the LCD. I have listed all of them here in this comment, and then I have set a number of variables with those same numbers. This way, later in the code, rather than using the numbers, I will just use the name of the variables. And so, if in the future I will need to change some or, or all of these numbers, I will have to change only the one line of code where the corresponding variable is initialized, and the rest of the code will act accordingly. To make the display work, we will need to define an object representing it, listing all the pins used to control it in the correct order. And this is what this line of code does, defining the name of the object as LCD. This name will be used every time we will need to interact with the display. Another thing that needs to be done is to specify the number of rows and columns of the display, and that is done in the setup function, right here, by calling the begin method of the object LCD with the appropriate number of columns and rows. Still in the setup function, we are also clear the display to start with nothing in it, and then we set the cursor to the upper left corner of the display, and we print in it the world initializing. This way, when we power up the Arduino, we will see that the MIDI module has started the initialization. If we don't see this message, we will have to manually reset the board, which we will be able to do with an appropriate reset button present on the panel, which we will examine later. Still in the setup function, for each type of message we already print on the serial monitor, I have created a corresponding one that will go to the LCD, up to the end where we show initialization completed. This way we can follow the various stages of the initialization and see if something has gone wrong, in which case we still have the opportunity to manually reset. Everywhere else in the code, and in particular in all the callback functions that process the MIDI messages, I have added some code to write on the LCD the same thing that we used to write on a serial monitor. And this is all for the code, just a few changes on top of the existing program used in the previous video on the MIDI interface, and this allows us to visualize the same information that we did on the serial monitor now on the LCD screen. Now, based on the Arduino pins selected in the program, I arranged on a schematic diagram all the connections around the Arduino, the USB host shield, and the LCD. The first thing to note in the diagram is the presence of the USB host shield on top of the Arduino Duo itself. There are no connections to visualize for this, because the shield has a number of pin headers that sit exactly on top of the corresponding pin headers of the Arduino. However, there are three jumpers that need to be set on the shield itself to make it work with the Arduino Due. We'll take a look at those details in a moment. Note now how the Arduino has three pins dedicated to the power supply, a plus 3.3 volts, a plus 5 volts, and a ground pin. 
This is because the microcontroller used by the Arduino 2, which is a SAM 3x8E processor, uses a 3.3 volt logic, not the usual 5 volt logic we expect on other Arduino boards. The plus 5 volts is actually just an output to power an external circuitry, but the Arduino does not use that voltage internally. And that is the reason for those two extra modules in the center. Basically, we would need to connect the data pins on the Arduino 2 to the corresponding data pins on the 1602A LCD. However, while the Arduino uses a 3.3V logic, the LCD uses a 5V logic. And so we can therefore power the LCD directly from the Arduino, but we cannot connect directly the data pin of the Arduino to the data pins of the display. These modules in the center have the job of converting the logic signals from 3.3 volts to 5 volts and vice versa. So they are basically bidirectional adapters or converters. I found that SparkFun sells this very small board for just 350 each. So instead of making the converters myself, I decided to buy these little boards on Amazon and use them directly. These circuits are done in such a way that they have two sides, one at the higher voltage and one at the lower voltage. The lower voltage side will be connected to the Arduino, the higher voltage side will be connected to the display. This way we will have the correct logic levels to make possible the dialogue between the Arduino 2 and the display. To make these circuits aware of the logic levels on each side, we will also need to connect them to the appropriate power supply on one side and the other. Therefore, LV is connected to the 3.3V, HV is connected to the plus 5V, ground or GND is connected on both sides, the signal wires coming from the Arduino 2 are connected to LV1, LV2, LV3 and LV4. The signal wires coming from the LCD are connected to HV1, HV2, HV3 and HV4. Finally, there are two more components in this circuit. The first is a 10K input used to adjust the contrast on the LCD. The second is a 220 ohm resistor which is used to power up the LED behind the LCD screen so the display can be backlit and be visible. Now, to make this circuit work, we will need to keep in mind the following things. First, we need to set the appropriate jumpers on the USB host shield. These are the jumpers for the VBUS power, which needs to be set to 5V, the 3.3V power supply, and the 5V power supply. For details on how to set these jumpers, please refer to the other video mentioned earlier. And note that these jumpers have to be set each with a drop of solder. Second, we will need to power the whole circuit with a 9 volt power supply through the appropriate connector on the Arduino 2. That's the max value the Arduino 2 can withstand. Note that the synth rack does not provide this voltage on the power rails, and this means that we will have to arrange something before we will be able to install the new module on the rack itself. But let's leave this discussion for another day. Finally, we will have to tune the trim pot to adjust the appropriate level of the contrast on the display screen. And to make things simpler, here is a picture where you can see how everything needs to be set in place. Note how the shield sits perfectly on top of the Arduino 2, and note also those three red dots on the USB host shield itself. Those are the three jumpers we need to set. You can follow this picture to make your own connections across all these boards. And this is the circuit prototype fully mounted. I have used a breadboard on the right side for the connections to the LCD and to the two logic level converters. Here is the Arduino 2 and on top of it, it sits the USB host shield 2.0, which is mounted exactly like you can see in the video I previously mentioned. All the connections that go between the Arduino 2 and the 1602A LCD pass across the two logic converters. For this circuit to work, we will need to upload the program we've just seen, which by the way, it has already been done. So at this point, we just need to connect the various cables to the circuit and see if it works as expected. I have also left connected my laptop, so we will be able to watch the serial monitor, if needed. 
Finally, here is my Akai LPD8, which I will use to generate the MIDI messages to test our circuit. So, let's connect all the cables and let's see what happens. First, the connector for the serial monitor on the laptop. And we can see that the Arduino has already gone through the whole initialization process. Both the LCD and the serial monitor, in fact, are showing the initialization completed message. But let's concentrate on the LCD screen, since the part that generates the serial monitor prints is basically the same uh, that was tested in the previous video. Now I am connecting the external power supply to the Arduino, so we have enough juice to also power the Akai LPD8. And finally, I am connecting the USB cable from the MIDI device. Now you should be able to see that the LPD8 has been powered on, since the perimeter of the pads are now lighted in red, which can be better seen if I turn off the desk lights for a moment. So let's see if this thing works now. Touching a pad, and you can see how the Arduino has received an auto-on message for channel A with pitch 27 and velocity 4. And if I now release the pad, we get the corresponding not off message with velocity 0. Let's try now to hit a pad harder to see if we get a higher velocity value. And of course I should have left my finger on the pad. <laughs> Let's do it again. Uh, yes, now we can see the velocity at 7F. Also, the pitch has changed since I have used a different pad. Now I am releasing the pad. And here is the not off message once again. Let's now try the potentiometers on the LPD8. Rotating these, we should produce control change messages. Let's see. And uh, there it is. And look at how the data2 parameter keeps changing when I rotate the potentiometer. And if I pick a different potentiometer, the same thing happens, although the data1 parameter changes since it is associated to the specific potentiometer. So, everything seems to work fine. We can definitely use this prototype as the basis for the MIDI module we are going to build. In the next few episodes of this series, we will keep adding new pieces to this prototype until we obtain all the functionalities we want for the MIDI module. Then we will build the actual module, we will install it on the same track, and we will be finally able to use it for making some music, and why not some noises as well. I'll see you in the next video, and as usual, happy experiments!